It's that time again, Blu-ray haul. It's Morphin time. Hello, this is Sound here, and welcome to my Blu-ray haul from July to September of 2023, covering everything I picked up, Blu-ray and DVD-wise, in that range. As always, let's begin with things that already have their own individual videos. First up, I went over the Ultraman vs. Red King collection, featuring a compilation of episodes, and talked about if they have better transfers than the originals. I've also already covered Kamen Rider Black RX on Blu-ray from Discotech Media with a full review. We also discussed the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Ultimate Collection, the DVD set complete series set for the 2003 series, and everything that goes in with that. Plus, we just recently discussed the in-circle releases of Sonic the Hedgehog, also known as Sad AM, and Sonic Underground. And of course, we've covered Cleopatra Entertainment's Disastrous Shin Ultraman release, which has had a replacement disc, and now a second replacement disc, and I will be doing a video on the second replacement disc in the near future. This time we're going to start with movies. Uh, let's go with some new releases. Fast X, the latest Fast and the Furious movie. I have come to love this franchise and adore it, absolutely. Uh, this is the newest Steelbook, which uh, contains a 4K and a Blu-ray of the film. I don't think there's any interior art on these. Uh, this is pretty standard release. Uh, I feel like I've seen this cover multiple times. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but I do appreciate that with Fast X and Fast 9 and uh, Fate of the Furious, they all have kind of the same style to it. Uh, the promo image for uh, X and 9 is almost the same, um, but you can kind of see they have their similar style. You can see that the spines actually line up and match up and on the backs as well. And so if Best Buy exclusive steelbooks for an ongoing film franchise can have consistent spines, you can too, Warner Brothers. Um, yeah, it's kind of amazing, actually. I don't have the first seven in steelbooks, but I also don't know if the first seven have steelbooks in this specific style. Uh, let me know in the comments because I'm kind of into that. Uh, but yeah, Fast X was quite a ride of a movie. Uh, it's one of those you just got to go in and realize that, oh yeah, Fast and the Furious is essentially like a shonen anime played out by a bunch of D&D &D fans. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense a lot of times, but it's fun as heck. Uh, also, Jason Momoa was the villain in this one, and he was delicious. A delicious villain. He was just so, so evil. But anyways, uh, yeah, Fast X adding to the Fast Furious collection, and um, yeah, I don't know, maybe we'll see if uh, Eleven ever comes out. Uh, if we get a steelbook in the same style, because that would be super cool. Next up, we have the Super Mario Brothers movie. This didn't come out in the last quarter. Uh, I think it came out a little before. It kind of surprise dropped on us. This movie was making so much money, they didn't know when they wanted to release it on disc. And so I just ended up picking it up later. Uh, I liked it. I think, you know, liked it is pretty much like where I'm at. Uh, there was a lot of, I think, when it comes down to the movie itself, I think it's a really great tribute to Mario and the world and the characters. And it's got a lot of fan service for that. As a movie, uh, it kind of fails at the um, every aspect of storytelling in a movie, uh, which is uh, unfortunate. You know, I can't say that like it works as a movie, but if you know anything about Mario, you're probably gonna have a good time. Uh, which is also why it ultimately doesn't matter if it works as a movie, because uh, if you're a fan of Mario, you're gonna have a good time, and that's why it made like stupid money. Uh, this is pretty good bonus uh, bonus features on the Blu-ray, which is really nice. Just some like bonuses and extras nothing like crazy crazy but it's it's there most of them are about the cast uh which i'm like yeah but like the characters i don't care about your celebrities as much anyways i did enjoy the movie um but it's not uh it's not what i call like the greatest movie but as a mario movie it's it's definitely the best adaptation they ever had okay another new release of an older film uh father's little dividend this one has a bit of a story behind it one of the classic films uh came out way way back uh was father of the bride uh starring uh, spencer trainee joan bennett and elizabeth taylor uh this was you know a classic film uh modern audiences probably may recognize the uh, father of the bride uh steve martin remake uh, which also had its sequel. But Father of the Bride, classic film. Uh, it was released into the Warner Archive collection. Uh, I forgot what year this was. 2016, I think. 2016. Uh, it took till 2023 to finally get Father's Little Dividend. Now, the reason why this is important, uh, and I know all this because of my mom, by the way. Shout out to mom. She's the one that uh, introduced me to these movies. But Father of the Bride, it gets a lot of releases. It had a really solid DVD release. It's got, of course, this Blu-ray. It happens a lot. Father's Little Dividend, despite being a well, well-renowned sequel, like a lot of people really like the sequel, it's never had a good release. Uh, outside 
of this Blu-ray, there was a really crappy DVD uh, that we picked up that basically felt like a bootleg despite it being official. Um, but this is actually a proper uh, remastered Blu-ray done by Warner Archives, so it's terrific. And it finally uh, finishes the pair here. Uh, it also, uh, look how much Warner Brothers branding changed between movies. <laughs> it's kind of kind of freaky. This also includes some bonus features like Tom and Jerry cartoons and like a, a trailer and a, a something Pete Smith specialty bargain madness. Nothing about the movie itself, just kind of like extra stuff they kind of threw in there. I think it was similar for this one too. Yeah, newsreels were on this one uh, that were related to the film. This one doesn't really have anything on the movie, but it is good to finally get a good release of this film because it has been a long, long time coming. Uh, I don't know why it took this long. All right, now we're going to get into stuff that I uh, picked up on sale. Uh, you know, just catching up a little bit. First of all, it's a Mad, 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 Mad World by the Criterion Collection. Uh, this film is a really, really funny comedy. Uh, it was so many uh, famous comedians at the time uh, were in this. 1963, so it was like the height of a lot of the style of comedy that was in this film. Uh, this was a two-disc uh, Blu-ray collection because there's actually two cuts of the movies. Uh, there's a you know regular theatrical, and then there's an extended cut. And the extended cut, I believe, hadn't been released uh, prior to this Blu-ray. Uh, so that was really, really cool. That's the reason why we picked it up. My mom was watching stuff about uh, the film and then heard about it. And I was like, oh, hey, I know where to get Criterion stuff. Uh, this came out in 2017, so it's been a while. But uh, I'll just let you read the bonus features list. If you like, you can pause and read that. Just a whole lot of stuff. Just so much stuff right there. Uh, pretty incredible. And then you also get just the word mad written all over the place. Uh, the plot of this film, there's an essay about it in a pamphlet form. The plot of this film is that uh, this is a lot of people chasing after a bunch of money. A bunch of stolen money. Uh, it is absolutely hysterical if you've never seen it and you love uh, a lot of you know comedians and comedy films from the 60s. Uh, or even before then, there is a lot to it, uh, and there are some people in there you'd never expect to see. Highly recommended. I uh, really, really love uh, this movie. All right, I haven't watched Van Helsing since it came out in theaters. Why'd you buy a 4K Blu-ray, you might ask? Well, that's because it was on sale for like 10 bucks, and I thought, you know what? Halloween season's coming up. Why not? Uh, this was uh, Universal's like 40th attempt to rebrand the Universal Monsters. They've never really pulled it off. Uh, they've tried to bring back the classic monsters so many times and modernize them and stuff. This one in particular, um, you know, it's Van Helsing, Monster Hunter himself as like the main character. They made him like super cool and stuff because he's played by Hugh Jackman. Uh, but then there's like werewolves in here and Frankenstein monsters and vampires. So it's like, it's trying to do like Avengers Endgame, the, the Universal Monsters movie, but it's like the first one in a series. They were just trying to like kickstart something here. Uh, I haven't seen it, again, since it came out in theaters. I don't think I watched it on DVD. Uh, very long time coming to see this again. But you know what? I'm going to watch it this Halloween. It's going to be uh, it's gonna be an adventure because this was like, I don't know, what year was this? Like 2000-something. So it's it's been a while. It's, it's time to revisit Van Helsing. All right, speaking of comedies, uh, Night Shift was a comedy starring uh, Michael Keaton and Henry Winkler where they work at a morgue and end up running a prostitution ring. Now, they all have good intentions here because um, they want to essentially get uh, the the poor uh, sex workers here away from their abusive pimps, and they have the good intention of that while also uh, trying to make money, of course. It is kind of an absurd comedy. Uh, it was done in the 80s, directed by Ron Howard, even. Uh, just, it's a really funny movie. Uh, you gotta kind of, you know, take it with the, hey, it's an 80s movie. Uh, there, you know, not everything has aged well because uh, 80s movie. But uh, if you've never seen it and you like Henry Winkler, if you like Michael Keaton, you're going to enjoy it, I think. Uh, I certainly did. This was a recommendation from my dad, and uh, we watched it a while back when we got the DVD. Uh, so now seeing a nice Warner Archive Blu-ray is terrific because Blu-rays are forever. All right, speaking of crazy comedies, uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, starring Steve Martin and John Candy, uh, directed by John Hughes. Uh, this movie is sort of funny. I have a funny story with this. This movie is an R-rated movie. But for the most part in this movie, there's not anything R-rated. <laughs> uh, and so, in fact, when you see it on TV, like especially uh, we were watching it, we saw it on TV a lot, uh, it seems like a you know PG-13-ish movie. Uh, there's one scene where Steve Martin goes on a tirade and drops like 15 F-bombs in like five minutes. Um, so the thing was, we watched it on DVD way back when, when I was a kid. Um, my mom did not realize 
uh, oh boy, there is a lot of cursing in this one scene. Uh, so it's kind of one of those weird, weird movies. A lot of older films are like that. Uh, but essentially, it's a road trip uh, buddy comedy sort of thing. This uh, new 4K of it from Paramount has the movie on 4K plus bonus features and stuff on Blu-ray. The thing is, the movie's not on Blu-ray, but the, bl uh, the bonus features are. And the bonus features include all the legacy bonus features plus new bonus features and like 90 minutes of deleted and extended scenes that have never been seen by the public before. And that's the kind of thing I love seeing on Blu-ray. Um, in fact, that's actually what they put right here. You know, over an hour of never before seen deleted and extended scenes, uh, which is why I wanted to pick this up. And uh, we picked it up on it got them on sale. But yeah, it's uh, I haven't I don't think I've actually gone through that whole bonus disc yet. Totally need to do that. Um, but yeah, it's another it's another one of those crazy wacky comedies. All right, The Hobbit Motion Picture Trilogy Extended Edition. Uh, so the Lord of the Rings movies have been released like way too many times. Uh, they did a 4K set recently that was the six movies only and no bonus features. I'm a bonus feature guy. Uh, I never watched the Hobbit movies. As you can hear my tone of voice, I haven't still watched the Hobbit movies. Uh, I watched the original Lord of the Rings trilogy when they came out. I was kind of into like Fellowship of the Wing, Two Towers. Uh, I fell asleep watching Return of the King in theaters. Uh, you know, I was a kid, but still, it was a long movie. I have never revisited those movies. But I do own the Lord of the Rings trilogy set of the three movies with the extended editions and with all the appendices being the uh, bonus discs. So I thought I need to get that same set for The Hobbit. And then I waited for that to go on sale because I just am not super into Lord of the Rings. Also because I'm a weirdo that likes the animated Lord of the Rings movies more than live action ones. But, uh, you know, I need to revisit this stuff at some point. This set is kind of ridiculous. It's got movies and then like two discs for each uh, for bonus features wise. And they're in these individual cases. It's not as fancy as the uh, Lord of the Rings set I have. But yeah, I'm kind of like, yeah, I need to go and just sit and watch all the uh, Lord of the Rings movies and form opinions on them. And yes, you're probably like, wait, why are you so worried about bonus features when you haven't even watched the movies? Because I'm like that, okay? But uh, yeah, I got this for like 30 bucks on Prime Day, so heck yeah, taking it, because uh, this is the set that I wanted to get, uh, not any of the other releases. All right, and then we got the Alfred Hitchcock Classics Collection Volume 2. Uh, it's not marked as such, it's just the blue one. Uh, if you see the Alfred Hitchcock Classics Collection Volume 1 is the red one. Uh, you can see Volume 2 is a little bit thicker because it does contain five movies instead of four. So the first one was kind of the thrillers, you know, Rear Window, Vertigo, Psycho, uh, The Birds. This one is uh, a little different. Uh, I think, what are they? They call these the suspense movies. Um, but this is Saboteur, Shadow of a Doubt, Troubled Harry, Marnie, and Family Plot. Um, I actually haven't seen any of these. Uh, there is a plan in my life to go and watch all these. I saw pretty much, I think I've seen every movie in the first set at least at some point, but I've, I've never seen Saboteur. Uh, I haven't seen Shadow of a Doubt. I have not watched The Trouble with Harry. I have not watched Marnie, and I have not seen Family Plot. I think Family Plot was like his last movie. I do think there is a third one coming out this month. I will probably pick it up again on sale, uh, just like I did with this one. Since they do tend to hang around, um, I do need to get the second Universal Monster set too. Um, but these are all in 4K and Blu-ray, so it is a nice uh, combo set. You can't go wrong with this. This is probably the best these movies looking. Pretty solid set. Again, probably need to actually watch these movies. All right, this is going to be a shorter segment in theory. Uh, we have Star Trek stuff. So Star Trek Picard, the final season, season three, is now out on Blu-ray. Sadly, we didn't get a 4K. Uh, I think a lot of people did, considering this was the big reunion of the TNG cast. Uh, and then they kept Seven and Rafi here because they're smart. This was quite a terrific, big, spectacular finale for the TNG cast. And it came out in this really nice uh, steelbook. Uh, there also is a complete series set. There is a regular Blu-ray and there is a big Picard set that comes with TNG, the movies, and the uh, seasons one through three of Picard. So pretty cool. Uh, this set in general was really nice. Uh, you can see it's a two disc set uh, where you get uh, four up or five up. No, you get four episodes on disc two plus bonus features. Oh, it's a three disc set. Sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Three disc set where you get, because I forgot this thing was here. Uh, I always cut down the cardboard sleeves on my steelbooks and put them inside because uh, I don't like to deal with them on the outside. But anyways, it's three discs. Here is a shot of everybody playing poker. Terrific. So it's three discs. You get, what is it, three episodes on the first disc. You get four episodes on the second and then three episodes on the final disc. Um, so it's a total of three discs for the ten episodes. You get five audio commentaries plus a lot of bonus features, 
including deleted scenes, an uncensored gag reel, and a Q&A that they did for a IMAX screening that was held. So pretty cool stuff. It's pretty well packed. I'm, you know, just hours and hours of bonus features. Really great way to revisit the season. There is an Easter egg bonus feature on disc three if you're looking for it. Uh, speaking of disc three, there is a shot uh, of the Enterprise in the last episode that uh, is unfinished, quote unquote. It looks fine. You probably won't notice it, but it was something that they had updated when the series aired on Paramount Plus. So they have a replacement disc program available if you want to get a replacement disc. Uh, I'll leave a link to Trek Movies article on that in the description below uh, in case you don't know about that. Because, uh, yeah, if you're getting the big Picard Legacy set, they delayed that to include the new disc. But if you have any of the other releases, you want to uh, hit that link and get it. If you if you care about that sort of thing, they have a comparison shot of what the shot looks like on the disc and what it looked like on Paramount+. Plus. So, uh, good things there. The other good thing, too, is that this is our third steelbook for Picard, which means if you pair it with the Season 2 and the Season 1, you get... Three different looking spines. Uh, it's really funny how the Blu-ray logo disappeared on the third one. Uh, the CBS Blu-ray logo up top stayed, and then the logo just changed size each time. But whatever, it looks nice. Uh, I didn't feel like rebuying it for the uh, complete set since I already bought these two. If they had done a complete set that was 4K for the whole series, you probably would have got me to rebuy it. But uh, as is, I'm good with just having these three steelbooks on the shelf. Uh, looks terrific. The uh, Picard Saga has concluded. The next thing we have, Season 1, Episodes 11 through 20 of Star Trek Prodigy. This release was up in the air because Star Trek Prodigy, uh, unfortunately, despite being a wonderful show that introduces people to Star Trek, um, especially younger audiences, it was canceled by, uh, by Stupid Paramount. They took it off their Stupid Paramount Plus streaming service and then said, uh, we'll shop around Season 2 and hope you see it. Um, just still disgusted by it months later. And the thing I said at the time, I was like, well, this sucks because you can't watch 11 through 20 uh, except through an iTunes purchase that wasn't working for some people because we only had 1 through 10 on Blu-ray. The thing was, when the show got taken off Paramount+, Plus, Trek fans rushed this release on Amazon and sold it out, sold it out at Target. A bunch of retailers were like out and ordering more. And I think that triggered Paramount to go, oh, crap, people actually like this show. Yeah, dummies, we were telling you. Um, we're still telling you. But they did get Volume 2 out, uh, which is really, really nice. So we do have a complete Season 1 of Prodigy, and as of right now, the complete series in general. Uh, you can also see these spines don't quite line up at the top here. I'm just going to shrug this off. I'm just glad we got it. Uh, the cool part, too, is that we had bonus features for Volume 1. We do still have bonus features for Volume 2. I imagine these were produced prior to the series cancellation, but we do get those. And in addition to that, just like with Volume 1, uh, the 10 episodes are on two discs with bonus features as a collage of images from the season behind it. And you get four character cards. So we've got a Jankum Pog card with uh, the Protostar information on it. We've got a Murph card with uh, Universal Translator info on the back. We've got a Zero card with the Neutral Zone info. And we get a Dreadnought card with the Borg on the back. Oh, I didn't hold that up long enough for you to pause it. There you go. Uh, and so what's cool about this is if you pair it with uh, Volume 1, which also came with character cards, uh, that was Dal, Gwyn, uh, the crew, and Janeway, you have cards for everybody that got a toy and then Dreadnought, and no Rock Talk card. Why does freaking everybody hate Rock Talk on the licensing department? Um, we're sitting here going, we have most of the Protostar crew, like we don't have Janeway, Right, but we never saw the Rock Talk figure, and we have no idea if she's ever coming out. And she doesn't even get an individual card. Instead, we got freaking Dreadnought. I don't want a card of Dreadnought. I want a card of Rock Talk. Anyways, upset things aside, I am absolutely grateful that we have these. I am glad. And uh, season two better come out on Blu-ray, or else uh, I think we're going to, you know, go from hashtag Save Star Trek Prodigy, which we're still posting about until the show finds a home, to hashtag Give Me Season Two on Blu-ray because you need to finish this stupid Paramount. That might be a little long for a hashtag, but we will do what we do. The cool part too is if you're in the UK, you can get the entire season in one set uh, instead of the two split volume thing. So that's also pretty handy. It's Disney time. Surprisingly, there's actually stuff to talk about. Disney, uh, they've been picking back up in the home video market. If you haven't heard the news, wait for the Marvel segment. Um, but they've been picking back up into the home video market, uh, probably because they realize that there is a lot of untapped money here, and they're absolutely fools to try to abandon it like they were earlier this year. They're back in. We got stuff coming out, including The Nightmare Before Christmas coming out for the 452nd time and the 398th time I've owned it. 
the 4K Blu-ray edition of the film. This is a brand new transfer of the film onto 4K, and it looks absolutely incredible. Bonus features wise, it has most of what was included in the prior releases. I believe the 20th anniversary DVD still has stuff that did not make it to the Blu-ray, but as you can see, nice 4K Blu-ray here, and then a uh, same exact Blu-ray of the sing-along edition. So the 4K has the new transfer, the Blu-ray is the same disc as the previous sing-along edition release. That is still a good disc, mind you. The 4K definitely is an improvement if you got the tech for it. Uh, so for fans of this film, like myself, I'm very, very excited to watch it this year in a brand new higher resolution than ever before. Uh, and it absolutely is delightful to see. And also this cover is really good. I'm glad we got a good cover. All right, next up, Little Mermaid. Uh, Disney tried to screw around with the release of this and Elemental. Um, the 4K Blu-ray digital code combo that you see here and here, these are exclusive to Disney Movie Club. The only way to get a 4K at a general retail store is if you get the Walmart Special Edition or the Best Buy Steelbook. Yeah, this is why I was getting really concerned about this company, and then they started doing stuff like that. Anyways, the point is, The Little Mermaid, I enjoyed this movie. I actually didn't watch it until I got the Blu-ray. I missed it in theaters because uh, I was traveling a little bit. I actually quite enjoyed this. I thought it was... You know, it was a good update to a lot of things. Uh, Prince Eric has a character arc now and, like, personality. Uh, it overall, I think, was a good adaptation of the animated film. I think the general, like, you know, Disney live-action adaptations are in general kind of pointless because, you know, the original animated films are so great. But I do think this did improve on some of the weaker elements of the original, which I thought was good. I don't know if it supersedes the original animated film, but it's kind of like Aladdin where I could go and watch either and be pretty happy. I don't really have like an overall huge preference on one or the other. Um, so, you know, mission accomplished. Uh, I still prefer the Disney live action films like Maleficent or Cruella that kind of takes a different perspective on the original film as opposed to just straight up remaking it. Yeah, I don't like, especially like Lion King. I didn't watch Lion King out of disgust of the fact that that was just a straight up shot for shot remake. Uh, it's not even like you're changing mediums. It was still animation. It just looked more boring. Visually, I think this movie worked pretty good. Uh, Halle Bailey is terrific as Ariel. Melissa McCarthy was surprisingly good as Ursula. I was actually kind of surprised, honestly. Didn't play like an SNL sketch like I was worried about. You know, overall, I like this a lot. I haven't checked it out. I think it's worth at least a watch. Um, you know, you never... What's, what's going to hurt? You know, it's, it's Little Mermaid. It's delightful. Elemental. Uh, like I said, same thing with the release strategy. Like, if you wanted a 4K outside of Disney Movie Club, you had to go to Best Buy or... Um, or Walmart. Luckily, with Haunted Mansion, it looks like the 4K is a wide release, um, so they're not continuing that. Uh, that was really weird for these two movies. Uh, you know, cost-cutting at the sake of the consumer experience kind of sucks, because people like having options for stuff, especially if you order from, like, smaller retailers, like Deep Discount or, um, or you know, ones I can't think of at the moment. It, it kind of sucks when you can't just order the 4K from them, especially if you don't want a Steelbook or a Walmart edition. But, you know, if you've got Disney Movie Club, yeah, it's got benefits, but hopefully this doesn't become a trend. Uh, that being said, Elemental, despite kind of a, it's kind of a boring cover, honestly. It's, it's nice to see Ember and Wade, but, like, it's kind of a boring cover otherwise. A terrific film. It kind of went under the radar, kind of became a sleeper hit at the box office. It kind of, like, it crossed a good, like, half a mil half a billion dollars um, eventually. This is uh, just a terrific film. It's, you know, it's pitched as kind of like the Romeo and Juliet, she's fire, he's water, they can't be together kind of thing. It's actually a lot more layered than that. Uh, the marketing really downplayed the fact that this is a, uh, this is an immigrant story. Specifically, like, an immigrant story of, like, generational pressure, not so much of, like, oh, the ancient ancestors told us this, but more so that, like, Ember has the pressure of her father wants to pass the, the shop he owns on to her. And how does that affect the decisions she makes? And how does Wade factor into that as someone who is, uh, wealthy and, and kind of part of the main city where she's kind of in the smaller uh, immigrant town area of the city. And there's a lot of really great depth to us, in addition to being a really cute love story. Uh, the gimmick of the elements working together is what they played up in the marketing, but the heart and core of the characters and the stories and how they relate to our uh, daily lives is actually what makes it great. And that was Disney's mistake in marketing it because they played up the gimmick, not the actual story. But I gotta tell you, if you haven't seen this, I highly recommend checking it out. And then lastly, here is Jungle Cruise. I didn't pay anything for this. Uh, Disney Movie Insiders put up the Jungle Cruise 4K on uh, the rewards thing, and I cashed in some points, and boom, here it is. Yeah, get your Disney Movie Insider points, especially if you buy Blu-rays, because if you redeem the digital codes, you get like two or 300 points per digital code, and then something like this was like 850 points, so not bad. This is a 4K Blu-ray release. It's got 
pretty good bonus features. It seems like only the Marvel stuff gets like laxed on the bonus features, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but this has pretty good stuff. This is an adaptation of the uh, Disney Parks ride, Jungle Cruise or Janae at Disneyland. I enjoyed it, saw it in theaters, was like, I should get that on Blu-ray, and then just never got around to it. And then Disney Movie Insider was like, hey, you want to cash in some of your points? I'm like, heck yeah, I do, especially for a movie I did enjoy. It kind of has like an um, uh, old school adventure vibe, uh, similar to like the uh, 1999 Mummy film. I felt like I had the same kind of vibe there. Uh, so I kind of enjoy that. And it's kind of a nice throwback to sort of a big adventure movie. And at the time it came out, it was probably one of the last like big scale adventure movies that we're going to get for a while. Because uh, they built a lot of stuff practically, which was really cool. Anyways, I really enjoyed it. Um, again, uh, these, I think, okay, Nightmare's pretty well known. But all three of these, you know, Middle Mermaid, Elemental Jungle Cruise, they're movies that you're either going to like or you don't like. I think they're all pretty good. None of them are bad, and I think if you haven't seen any of these three, there's some movie recommendations right there for you. I, I quite enjoyed all three of them. Hey kids, the theme of this segment is Obligation. DC time. Uh, this is one of the worst movies I've seen all year. And considering the next thing I'm talking about is The Flash, that's impressive. Uh, Just League War World is the most recent DC animated movie. If you haven't seen it, I don't recommend watching it. I want my 90 minutes back. Uh, this is legitimately one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Had this concept of Wonder Woman stuck in a Western setting, Batman stuck in a Barbarian setting, and Superman stuck in a Twilight Zone setting. Except they spend an hour of this movie without explaining a single thing or any context of what is going on. Uh, so if you don't know that's the premise, you're going to be completely lost. Then they info dump for about 15 minutes, then wrap it up with a big old battle scene, and it reads light into a tease for Crisis on Infinite Earths and doesn't have a real ending. This is what everybody complains MCU movies are. An absolutely nothing movie that only exists to connect to an overall cinematic universe. Except, unlike MCU movies that tend to have their own stories that do have endings, this has absolutely no ending. It just says, go see what... Oh look, Crisis is coming, and then that's it. And I'm not really that excited for Crisis because of it. Uh, the Tomorrow verse start with Superman Man of Tomorrow. I liked a lot of the movies. This is not one of them. Thing is, I, I just, I can't recommend anybody watching this movie because it's not really a movie. It's three vignettes that have absolutely no context and then it all is supposed to tie together. And despite being called War World, Mongol is not the main villain, um, or he is the main villain, but he's not even really in the movie. So if you're looking for a Mongol showdown, you're not getting that either. And if you're looking for Mongol, it misrepresents Mongol. It misrepresents Jonah Hex. It adapts Warlord in the world of Sarcastus in like a way that makes me like offended. They even changed the design of like Warlord's main villain Demos, make him look like a yellow claw racial stereotype, which he never was, considering he was made in the 70s. It's impressive, but still. Uh, movie sucks. I don't like it. It does have a spine art connecting with the stupid spine art that we've talked about too many times in the Blu-ray hauls and in separate videos of how it makes no sense and how because they didn't do 4Ks of Long Halloween, it means the 4Ks are like here for Green Lantern. It's actually this slot, so they're all off by one. And then for the fact that like not all the movies are included, so it seems like only the connected universe, but then Batman Soul of the Dragon is here, even though it's not part of this universe, because while Justice Society World War II takes place in another universe, that's the same Wonder Woman here, so you know, it's all connected, right? Yeah, there's for some reason Soul of Dragons here for no reason. And look at what we got. DC, mm, we don't have uh, even a completed end. We don't even know if we're getting any more anime movies after the Crisis on Infinite Earths two-parter. So we're going to get DC, mm, and that's it. Like, I, such a misfire. If they had done every anime DC movie in the spine, like it seemed like they were doing when they put Soul of the Dragon here, we probably would have gotten to DC Universe by the time, uh, you know, James Gunn decides to take over, like, the animation department or whatever's happening, because this absolute mess of a company continues to try to put stuff out and connect things and completely fails at it. I'm just ranting at this point, but like, this sucks. Uh, this spine art idea was cool, but it I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I don't think we're going to get universe spelled out here. It's just it's just not happening. Okay, and then the other movie uh, was The Flash. Uh, you couldn't tell from this cover because it doesn't say The Flash. It says it on the spine, though. Uh, it's just the Flash chest logo. On the inside, you get uh, The Flash in 4K, The Flash in Blu-ray, um, which, oh, it's stuck. All right, there you go. And then we get this uh, this little card that says, hey, Michael Keaton's in it. Um, and I'm like, yeah, that was like 80% of your marketing. And then there's just a shot of Keaton and the two Barry Allens just standing in red. This is one of the most dull-looking steelbooks uh, for one of the most bonkers, weird movies. Uh, some people love this movie. I don't. Uh, I like parts of it. 
I like ideas of it. Its humor is weird. It lacks, uh, I think, good taste in a lot of that humor as well. There are some really good jokes here and there, but the overall tone is really awkward and weird. It's a very strange movie. I don't really like it that much. I watched it once after, uh, you know, I got the Blu-ray, and I, I never intend to see it again. Um, that's an experience I'm not looking to relive. Uh, but if you enjoyed it, all, all power to you. Uh, I did not. Um, it's a good old 5 out of 10 for me, because Sasha Kaye was great as Supergirl, but she had nothing to do. Uh, now, this being said, why'd you buy a steelbook of a movie you didn't even see? Because, as you should know by now, even in this own video, the collection is paramount. Uh, in this case, Warner Brothers. But the collection is the important part, so like I've been doing, like when I got Shazam in the last Blu-ray haul, it's like, just as a reminder, I am the idiot who bought every single DCEU movie on Steelbook and in 4K, because I guess I have a problem. At this point, it just feels like desperation. Like, I really wanted the DCEU to be something. Like, as a big, longtime DC fan, I was like, man, why can't I have what the MCU got? But then the MCU's kind of messy these days. So, you know, really, did I just lose lose in all, in all cases? I mean, I'll say this much. I really look forward to getting Blue Beetle on Steelbook, because it'll look really nice away from these. I don't want it to be tainted. A lot of these, none of these movies, I think, really broke out at the end of the day. Some of them I, I really like. I mean, I like Wonder Woman. I like Shazam. Um, I even like, you know, some of them. I, I like some of them, like, less, but still like them, like Black Adam or, or Birds of Prey. Yeah, this is, this is a mess of a cinematic universe. Uh, the Flash is, quote-unquote, the end, but we still got Blue Beetle. We still got Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Please, James Gunn, say Blue Beetle and put him in your universe, uh, which I think is what he's doing. I don't know. I can't keep track anymore. I don't know what's going to happen with DC, guys. I, I'm a little burned out. That's also why you don't see things like the Mask of the Phantasm 4K here or like some other releases, because I'm like, eh, just get them on sale. I'm not, I'm not feeling the DC energy lately, uh, and these two pretty crappy movies back-to-back -back, uh, ain't helping. Let's flip side this to Marvel. I need to talk positive. So, the best uh, Marvel uh, MCU show of all time, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This isn't a new release, uh, as you can tell from how beat up it is. It's, uh, it's a pretty banged up. I uh, start looking into looking at the Blu-rays for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter because I did know some of them came out. I had picked up Season 1 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. back when it came out. It was a wide release. Season 2 apparently was an Amazon exclusive release along with Agent Carter Season 1, but those were never finished. But... There is uh, European releases that are region-free for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter. At least S.H.I.E.L.D. up to Season 5 and all of Agent Carter. So I'm like, I'm going to get those eventually. But I did see this nice uh, warehouse deal for those warehouse find for Amazon, which actually is the U.S. release of Season 2. Uh, it does come with deleted scenes and bloopers. Not as much as all the bonus features that Season 1 had. Uh, kind of wish that all, you know, was the standard. But it does have some good stuff. I will pick up Seasons 3 through five. I know season six and seven came out in Japan. I have no idea if they include English audio or if they're even easily available because I can't find them anywhere. But let me know if you guys know where I should look. Um, these look nice on a shelf. So uh, yeah, I don't have too much confidence in Disney going back and releasing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in a complete set or anything. And uh, same for Agent Carter. So I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to go get those, uh, those European Blu-rays and Hope for the best, because uh, I think those will be pretty good. It's just uh, it's just a matter of kind of filling out the collection. The ironic part is I started doing this before the last title we'll talk about today. Uh, kind of renewed our faith in a lot of things, but we'll get there. All right, next up, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 on Steelbook. I did do an unboxing of this uh, wearing my Star-Lord helmet. Um, or should I say Sound Lord did the unboxing there. Uh, but I didn't really talk about the release itself. It was kind of just more like, hey, let's do a fun gag. Nice artwork with all the Guardians here, with the High Evolutionary and all of his weirdos around him. Really cool, like, representation of the film. I think the color art is great. Backshot has uh, Rocket himself, uh, who is the main character of the movie. And then on the inside, we've got uh, a two-disc set. So it's 4K, Blu-ray. You got Rocket on disc one and Groot on disc two. But I do love that the, uh, the, the shot here is that final triumphant uh, slow-mo walk shot from uh, towards the end of the movie, which was in the trailers. It looks terrific. It also looks a little bit Photoshopped to, to shorten it in. Um, I don't remember them being that close together, but anyways, it looks cool seeing all the Guardians together. Um, I loved the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I think I haven't decided yet because I need to go back and watch them like again, like back to back. I did watch the first two again right before three came out, but I kind of need to watch them again 
Um, because three was like an incredibly emotional experience for me as a fan of these characters. Um, and also for the fact that like, while I've grown to really love like the comic book versions of the guardians and the video game version, um, maybe even more than the MCU versions, actually kind of, yeah, I do love the comics guardians a lot. The movies were my introduction to those characters. So, uh, it was kind of an emotional experience seeing like kind of the conclusion of their story here. And so because of that, I haven't watched the movie again, cause it was, I was incredibly emotional watching it, uh, in the theater. So I need to watch it again. And kind of decide, did I like this more than two? Because I really like two. I, the first one's the first one's the first one. The second and third are the ones I'm putting in contenders for, like, which one's my favorite of the three? Um, it might be this one, though. This one was really, really good. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Guardians of the Galaxy. Really nice steelbook to wrap out the trilogy. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, this this freaking release. Um, I don't have a problem with this release in concept. It's got 90 minutes of bonus features. You get the movie. It's a 4K and a Blu-ray. Looking all spectacular. There's Miles on there. There is Miles and Gwen on the Blu-ray. Sony did a good job with this. Unfortunately, um, you know, this being the sequel to Into the Spider-Verse, it was highly anticipated. It was probably one of the best movies of the year. We've had some really good movies this year. Um, loved the movie a whole lot. Uh, now, unfortunately, there was this weird thing where they kept updating the movie in theaters. Like, there's different versions that exist, and without, like, cam rips and people documenting it, we wouldn't know about some alternate takes of shots. Those alternate takes are not present on this Blu-ray. It's not in the deleted scenes or anything, which is kind of a bummer, because I would have liked to have seen those included, considering that, you know, some people prefer certain shots over others, and there's not, like, a version switch, because there was always, like, the, quote-unquote, early international version and the, um, the digital version, but I saw a mix of two the first time I saw it in theaters, so... You know, as much as Sony claims there's two versions, there's like six or seven. Only the final version that was released on digital and home video is the version here. There is no alternate versions with those different takes. There is no way to see those different takes officially on this release. I don't like that. Fix it for the next one. Uh, you know, even if it's a trilogy pack and you have to include a bonus disc or something. Like, I want to see all the stuff you guys made because uh, they pushed the artists on this movie a little too far, uh, trying to get the movie done in time. At least put all of their work on the disc, not just some of it. Okay, and uh, how's everybody enjoying the weather? Yeah, because hell froze over. Loki, the complete first season on 4K Steelbook. I don't know how it got so dusty, it's only been here a week. This was the mind-breaking moment that Disney uh, did. They were like, hey, you, you've been saying you wanna buy Disney Plus shows on disc? Here you go. This is the first of four coming out before the end of the year. WandaVision is hitting in November and The Mandalorian season one and two are hitting in December. So we'll be talking about those in the next Blu-ray haul. Uh, yeah, they did it. They put out Disney Plus shows on disc. And they actually did a really damn good job. Uh, I wanted to keep the uh, little cardboard sleeve out. I haven't cut it down yet. This is the complete first season of Loki. This came out first because uh, they wanted to get it out before Loki Season 2. So that makes sense. The cool part here is you do see it says Loki on the spine. And there is a 1. Uh, they did this with Mandalorian as well. There's a one and a two. So I'm hoping that when we do get season two, which it seems like they're planning to do, we will have that little two down there. This is all new artwork on this steelbook. So you can see Loki here, Loki and Sylvie, like looks like uh, King's Castle back there. The Loki logo, really cool stuff. And on the back, you got Loki and Miss Minutes. Uh, and then the symbol uh, from the, it's kind of from the final episode uh, look to it. It just looks gorgeous. And it actually spreads across both. It's a continuing image. And then on the inside, you've got... Uh, two discs. Each disc has three episodes on it. They are Blu-ray 100s, which means you're getting the full picture and audio range. Um, there's two different artworks of Miss Minutes there. And then you do get, on top of that, uh, three art cards uh, based on the concept art. Here's one of Alligator Loki. Uh, here's one from the uh, Rocks Art, uh, the Rock Smart, Rocks Cart, Rocks Cart scene. And then here is another one uh, with Eliath. So these are really, really cool. Uh, on the back, they just credit Marvel, not the actual concept artists. Boo, do better at that. And on the inside, you got a photo of Loki about to throw a knife, uh, which is pretty cool. But these are steelbooks. And so the way they're doing this is that this set that I picked up is the 4K. There is also a standard Blu-ray available. Um, this is the case for all four of them so far. And if you're on Disney Movie Club, you get a Blu-ray and DVD combo pack. The really cool part about this that surprised me um, so they are steelbooks. They are wide releases. The steelbooks aren't exclusive anywhere. Uh, you do get actual bonus features. Oh my god. Uh, I can't believe this, actually. This is pretty amazing. So I expected Assembled the Making of Loki documentary. They put up those Assembled documentaries on Disney Plus after each show, and after each movie. The movies, like, for example, um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I forgot to mention, I was talking about, like, the emotions and the characters. 
It does have a pretty good set of bonus features. There's a good, like, uh, 35, 40 minutes of bonus features here. They do not include the assembled episode, though, that is another hour of behind the scenes. So that did get included here. And I do want to say, Disney's watching this. Uh, if you make a, a, a volume disc that's just all the assembled episodes for the movies that weren't on their movies, please do that. And then going forward, just include the assembled episodes with the movies. Just hold the movie back on discs and put the assembled episodes on them. I would love to continue to see these uh, put on disc. In addition to this, there is never-before-seen bonus extras, including the design of the TVA, which was talking about the sets of the TVA, and included some previous to Season 2, a gag reel and deleted scenes, which is actually pretty cool to see, because we didn't see those before, and then you get the full uh, TVA orientation video, uh, which was kind of cut up in the first episode, but you get a full version of that. This is really neat. I expected the assembled episode. I did not expect additional new bonus features. And while we haven't gotten the rundown of what the bonus features for WandaVision and The Mandalorian seasons are, I hope we see the same as well. Not only including the assembled episode for WandaVision and the gallery episodes for Mandalorian, but also those bonus features. Disney, I will tell you this, if you're watching, I will buy every Disney Plus Marvel and Star Wars show or special or whatever if you release it, including the ones I don't even like, like Secret Invasion. I will pick them up because I do want to own these things on disc. These are important parts of the overall franchise and the universes and the collections, and not having them has felt like a massive gap. So I look forward to seeing what we'll see. I hope that we get to see everything. Um, this, this WandaVision and Mandalorian, they sold incredibly well. So I'm hoping that, you know, that'll green light a bunch of shows. I want to see Star Wars Andor. I want to see Werewolf by Night with both black and white and color. And, you know, the of course, the uh, director by night behind the scenes special. I want to see the animated shows. I really want Clone Wars Season 7. I really want Bad Batch. Maybe even wait for Bad Batch Season 3 to be done so we could get a complete set. Tales of the Jedi. Um, you know, any of that stuff, I'm in, you know, any of the Marvel shows, Hawkeye especially, I'm in. Just, if you make them, we will buy it. And uh, I think it's a great way to represent the work that everyone did on these shows. It's a great way to fill out the collection, and it's a great way to push home media forward in a streaming age. Uh, there's no reason these things shouldn't also come out on disc. It just makes sense. And I'll also add to that as well that the presentation here is better than Disney+. Plus. Because on the 4K, and probably on the Blu-ray as well, this doesn't include a Blu-ray, so I can't check for sure, it is a higher resolution, it is a stronger audio quality, and you don't have to deal with streaming buffering. It is definitely a better presentation on disc than it is on streaming, and if you love any of these shows, these are worth picking up. And if you love another show, try picking up at least one from the same franchise. Like, if you if you really want, like, some of the Marvel stuff they haven't done, like if you want Ms. Marvel... Pick up Loki or WandaVision just to send them that monetary message because, unfortunately, that's how corporations work. They want to see the money, not the feeling and the meaning behind the works that are done. So with that long speech aside, it's the end of the Blu-ray haul. So that was my Blu-ray haul. There was no anime this time, which I thought was interesting, and then I looked back at the release schedule and there just wasn't anything I was picking up right away. Um, but there probably will be more in the next one. So be sure to subscribe to the notification bell so you don't miss out on future Blu-ray and DVD videos. Hit the like button while you're down there, and leave a comment down below and tell me what you think of this quarter's haul. I had fun doing these. I love doing these Blu-ray hauls every three months, so stay tuned for future ones. Check out our Discord in the link below in the description. That way you can join our Blu-ray Den discussion chat about Blu-rays and DVDs, all kinds of good stuff related to physical media. You can also check out my live streams here on this channel, Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern, where I talk about Blu-ray news on a weekly basis. Also be sure to check me out on social media if you'd like, at Soundout12. You can find my awesome graphic designer on Twitter and Discord, at DarkCloud643, and you can find Hero Club at HeroClub.com for movie news and more. And until next time, this is Soundout saying, goodbye.